Hello. Today we're going to tie up a very popular smallmouth fly called the flash dancer. Fortunately, here in the Midwest, uh, smallmouth season has finally kicked into gear, and this is a fantastic bait fish, fish imitation to be cast in any of the streams or even any of the lakes where you've got smallmouth. It's a very ba basic fly. It's essentially similar to a woolly bugger with a marabou tail and a chenille body, except for it has an underwing here of a whole bunch of gold flashaboo, hence the name Flash Dancer. The head is a standard muddler wing and muddler head on it, and uh, it's a fairly simple fly to tie. Working with a deer here can be a little bit challenging, but let's get started. We're going to start tying the flash dancer by placing our hook in the vise. If you want to, you can go ahead and debarb the hook. This is a Mustad 3366. It's a wide gap streamer hook. We're going to start the fly by attaching our thread. I'm going to attach it about two eye lengths behind the eye of the hook like this. What that's going to do for me is that is going to be my marker that I don't want to have the body and the material for the body and the wing extend past that because that's where the head of the fly is going to be, meaning the, the deer hair. Run my thread down here to just past the point of the hook. The first half of this fly is actually pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it in terms of, uh, it's kind of like a typical streamer hook. We're going to take a red marabou feather here. This is just a blood quill marabou. We're going to tie this in. I want to tie this in so it's about a shank length to a, to a hook length long, something like that. I like to cut the excess off and then go ahead and tie this into the hook shank right here. I'll keep advancing down the hook shank a little bit to where I'm just over the point of the hook. And that'll get my tail all tied in. I'm not going to worry too much if the marabou is a little bit unruly right here because we're going to tie some chenille on top of this and wrap that forward for our body. This is just a medium uh, rayon chenille. I'm going to pull some of the end off here, so expose the core, and I'll tie that core in right here at the end of the shank. Once that's secured, I'm going to advance my thread forward to where I initially tied the thread or attached the thread to the hook right here. <clears throat> you can use your rotary features if you want. Um, I like to put a little bit more twist in the chenille so I get a little bit more round body to this, a little fuller. I'm going to wrap this around, starting right in the back here, and I'm going to get anywhere from 8 to 10 wraps. I want each of these wraps to be tight up against the previous wrap. That one's 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, Nine puts me pretty close. I'm going to put one more in, and that's just going to leave me a couple eye lengths behind the eye of the hook for the wing and the deer hair head of this fly. Once I have that tied in, I'm going to move my thread back just a little bit here because I'm right on top of the end of that. I want to tie my flash in. <clears throat> the flash is what gives this fly the name Flash Dancer. <clears throat> Larry Dahlberg put a whole lot of flash in, the, in this for a wing so that there's a lot uh, going on under the water when this thing is fished. Generally, a gold flash boo is used in this fly. You can certainly use a gold flash boo or even a holographic gold flash boo if you want. I picked this stuff up here from a hobby store after the holidays this past year. Not only was it on discount, but I like the gold. It's a richer gold color um, on this tinsel. It's not quite as straight 
Um, it's got a little bit more bends and twists in it than regular flashaboo, which isn't bad because that's just going to flutter more in the water. But as I said, that's why this particular flash is a little bit richer in color than your typical gold flashaboo, but you can use a regular gold flashaboo if you want. I'm going to bring this up underneath the thread like this, and I want the back end here to stick out maybe about a half a shank length past the tail. So this is going to end up being longer than the the overall length of the fly, and that's what I want because I want all of this to flutter in the background. I'm going to put a half a dozen wraps right here, working my way backwards a little bit. And I'm going to fold over the flashaboo right here. I'm going to cut this flashaboo here short. I don't want it as long as this. I actually want it to be a little bit shorter, maybe about two-thirds the length. But I'm also not going to cut it just straight across here. What I want to do is I want to cut this in uneven lengths like this. What that's going to do is all of these are going to flutter a little bit different in the water, therefore grabbing light a little bit more than just having everything being the same length. So it's going to give a little bit more action to it. With that tied in, I'm going to put some thread wraps down here along the shank up towards the eye of the hook. That's just to put a base of thread on the hook shank to get ready for the deer hair that I'm going to put in here. And then I'm going to whip finish this thread and I'm going to change my thread out. The thread that I'm using here is just a Wapsi UTC Ultra Thread, a 70 denier. I don't need anything super strong for the tail or the body or this part of the wing. So I'm just using a, a thinner, lighter thread. I'm going to put some head cement right on there on both sides. Let that soak down in. And as soon as that is all soaked in and dry, we'll attach our thread and we'll get our wing in. So with the first half of our fly already done here, I'm going to attach the thread. I'm changing out to a GSP 100 in white. This is just a Wapsi UTC GSP thread. It's a lot better for flaring and spinning deer hair than uh, the 70 denier. If you have like a 210 denier, a Flymasters Plus or something like that, that would work too. So I'm going to reattach my thread just right here behind the eye of the hook. Run that down to right in front of the wing here. Cut that thread off. I'm going to put just a little drop of head cement right here. That's just to kind of help anchor that thread on there just a little bit. It has nothing to do with the deer hair. Now, my wing on this is just a very, aside from the flashaboo wing, the deer hair wing is just very short. It's going to go back just the length of the body right here. Um, so I don't need long fibers of deer, deer hair. I've got, this is just a natural skin. I should say natural colored deer hair. It's not dyed or anything that I'm going to use. For the wing section, I want to uh, cut out a piece that's maybe about diameter of a pencil, something like that. I'm going to comb that out to get the under fur, and then I'm going to put that into a stacker and go ahead and stack it. I've already got mine pre-done. What we're going to do is we're going to, and once that's all clean, I'm going to put it up here so that the tips are just back the end of the body right here. Thing is, when I if I were to tie this on here and then pull and flare, all of this is going to be sticking up all over the place. I don't need this. Half of this is all going to get cut off anyway. So I like to go ahead, just measure this right here, 
and then just go ahead and cut off the excess like this that I don't need. Most of this will actually get cut out anyway when I shape the head. So it just makes it a little cleaner, a little easier to work with the fly. So I'm going to position that with the tips at the end of the body right here. I'm going to reach up and pinch both the fly in my fingers as well as the wing. And I'm going to take a loose wrap of thread right around the hair, down the other side, and just collect it down to the fly. I'm not pulling on that thread at all. You'll notice I'm just letting the thread actually, uh, the bobbin, the weight of the bobbin, collect it. I'm going to put two more wraps in here. Now, a lot of people at this point will go ahead and pull on their thread, let it spin around. I don't like to simply because if I do that, when I trim the head of the fly later, I'm going to be trimming a lot off here. I'm going to lose a third of the hair that's in this wing that's underneath is going to be cut out. What I prefer to do at this point is just push down from the top and rock it back and forth and you'll notice what the hair is doing is it is being pushed around to the sides but there won't be much on the bottom. And then pinching the deer hair wing in, the, in my left hand and holding onto the body then I'm going to draw in my thread like this. Put a few more wraps in and around those hair fibers to secure that. So now I've got a wing that's the right length and most of it is going to be on the upper half of the fly. All of these, as I mentioned, you'll notice that these were cut just long enough. They'll still work with making the head, but they're not so unruly out here as to get in my way. So I stroke those back. I'm going to bring my thread right up, put a few wraps right in here, right up next to it, and then advance it about halfway up to the eye of the hook. This is where I'm going to cut another section of deer hair out about a pencil in diameter, maybe a little bit less, because I'm not wanting to flare or spin a really, really tight head on this fly. It's similar to a muddler minnow, actually it's very much, the front half is very much like a muddler minnow, I want this head to be a little rougher. I don't want it really smooth and really packed tight because the rougher it is, the more little bits and pieces are sticking out at odd angles or they wiggle around, the more noise it's going to make in the water. So I don't mind if the, the actual head looks kind of ragged. One of those nice times in fly tying where um, if your fly doesn't look all that great, then that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to cut another piece of deer hair out. I've already cleaned this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this around because what I'm concerned about are the butt ends here. But in this situation, I don't need these tips. So again, to not spin all of that on there and have a big ball of hair to deal with, I'm going to go ahead and cut half of those off, the front half right there. And then about halfway in that clump, I will set that right up here on the hook, bring my thread around three times, and as I'm pulling in here, I will let go with my left hand so that I'm just spinning that hair around. If needed, you can assist that a little bit with your fingers just to make certain it's kind of evenly distributed. This gel spun, I have to be careful because for whatever reason, if I pull too tight with this gel spun on this particular deer hair, it just seems to cut through real, real easy. It, it will anyway on most deer hair, but for some reason this hair seems to be just particularly prone to it. So you get, as you can see, it's not a perfect ball around there, but that's what we're looking for because we're going to be trimming all of that back anyway. If you want you can use a hair stacker just to get this behind the eye of the hook a little bit. If that's going to help you get your thread up in there to fin uh, put a finish knot in there. I just use my high tech 20th century half hitch tool here. And this allows me to just push the hair back out of the way while I draw a half hitch or two right down behind the eye of the hook. And then I can cut my thread off.
And once again, I'm going to take my head cement and I'm going to put some way down in the hair right here. And this is, uh, again, a fly tight head cement. It's a thin head cement. I want it to soak right down in there so that it gets in all that hair and thread and everything and kind of gets nice and solid around the center. So while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and get ready to trim this. Trimming the head of the fly is pretty straightforward. If you've ever done a muddler minnow, it's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, there's a few uh, little things that I do different with the flash dancer than I do a muddler minnow. If you've ever done even a Dahlberg diver or something like that, it's kind of very similar. The key to cutting and shaping these heads is start out um, by taking a little bit off, leave it big, and then slowly reduce it down to the size and shape that you're looking for. At some point, you're going to have to decide, that's enough, I don't need to take any more. Now, I like to start all of mine with the bottom, simply because the bottom's generally always gonna be flat, and that gives me a nice reference for the rest of the head. So I'm just gonna take a razor blade here, which is the quickest and easiest, and I'm gonna go ahead and just run straight back here. I wanna come up a little bit at an angle because I don't wanna cut into that chenille. I could run the risk of cutting that and it falling apart. I'm gonna cut a little bit on each side. As you'll see in a little bit, that's not going to hurt it um, because we're gonna be rounding those edges anyway. But that gives me a nice flat bottom as a, like I said, a frame of reference for the rest of the head here. I wanna be careful that I don't cut this collar off. So when I'm going to cut and shape the head here, I wanna make certain that I don't cut into that. I'm gonna take my razor blade and curve it, but I'm keeping this not a real tight curve, but a wide curve because again, I want to take off more, I should say just a little bit and make the whole thing bigger then I'm going to need so that I can take a little bit more off as I go along. What this allows me to do is just shape this head just a little bit here. I'm more or less getting all of this cut back almost to the collar. I can then brush all of that out of there, and as you can see, I've got a rough shape here, but more importantly, I have all of that cut almost back from the collar. At this point, I like to take hold the collar back, take my scissors in here, and go ahead and just cut those out. Try to get all of them. If you don't, that's fine. Remember, as I mentioned, that this fly, like a muddler minnow, if the head's a little bit more ragged, uh, it's actually going to fish better. Now we could take our razor blade and shape this if we want. I just feel I have a little bit more control with the scissors, so I'm just going to start cutting away here, tapering down to the nose, just like this, cutting a little bit at a time. I kind of want to shape this as kind of like a, a bullet or half a bullet down towards the eye of the hook. And again, as I said, if it's not perfect shape, that's fine. And even if you have some pieces, uh, some of the hair that I have over on this side over here, it doesn't have to be just perfect. If you want to make it that way, you can. But you'll notice that these hairs right here, they're not all compact and, and really, really tight like a stacked bass bug or something like this. The other reason we don't want to stack so much hair in here is this is a, a streamer. It's going to be fished under the surface of the water. So if I have so much hair that's packed in there, it's going to be more positive buoyancy and it's going to be harder to fish this under the water. So that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. The last thing that I do <clears throat> is on the sides right here. 
On a muddler, generally your wing, you don't mind your wing coming all the way around from the bottom um, and, and the top. This I cut off. I want more of this white chenille to show. So what I'm going to do is cut off just some of these collar fibers right here close to the head so that more of the side of the body is going to stick out or I should say be seen. And that's up to you. You don't necessarily have to do it. I think the fly would fish just as well. Remember, this is just kind of a generic bait fish imitation. But that gets the side of the fly uh, a little bit more visible in there. And that is pretty much it. We've already put some head cement on there, so you don't have to put any more head cement or anything. It's all set. As you can see, this flash of boo tends to kind of get up and all over the place instead of laying nice and flat back, which is another reason I like it. It has a little bit more action in the water, always moving around, always fluttering with the currents. So thank you for joining me today while we're tying up this fly. I hope you enjoyed this and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned a few new techniques, a, new skill, a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing to my channel um, and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever uh, new videos are out, which is pretty much every week. Um, you can also help by sharing this video with anybody who you think might enjoy it. Uh, might learn something from it. Feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments below. And always remember, it's fly time. You're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.